It is that time once again. Baseball season has arrived and MLB The Show is here. And it is time for another franchise. And I cannot wait to get this one going. This one's going to be fun. It is always so much fun building a franchise team in baseball with the minor league system. It's just one of the best. It's, it's probably right up there with college football, I'd have to say. You know, bringing in young guys and it's just so much you can do, so much team building. It is probably absolutely one of the best things out there. I absolutely love it and I cannot wait to get this one going. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go through about five teams that I am possibly thinking about starting this franchise with. Now, what we will do is just go through the rosters really quickly, really go over the reasons why I'm thinking about the teams that I'm thinking of. I do have a couple favorites, but then in the description below, I will have a poll of the five teams, and also, you can also just make a comment below, maybe one of the favorite teams you you want to see out of the five, and then more than likely, we'll have our first video drop on Thursday on opening day. Now, the first team that I am thinking of, we have three NL teams, and two AL, so we'll start in the NL, and we're going to start in the NL West, and that is the Colorado Rockies, a team last year that finished 68 and 94, a team that has had some success in the past. Obviously, Troy Tulowitzki led this team to the playoffs, to a World Series, which they have never won. So that is a big key for sure. I always love picking teams that have really never won anything and trying to get that first, you know trophy championship for that organization like we have with the Lions right now in Madden. Now this Rockies team is interesting. I think they're going to be a little bit better than the 68 wins they were last year. They have some veteran guys, Blackman, Chris Bryant, Ryan McMahon, CJ Crone. They got some decent talent. Now as for maybe that like farm system that you always look up and try to build the team around, they're kind of a mid-level farm system. They have some talent there on the roster, but obviously you're playing in one of the toughest divisions really to win in baseball. You got to compete with the Los Angeles Dodgers, a team that is going to spend insane amounts of money. They don't, they don't care what they're spending. And then not only that, they have one of the better farm systems in baseball. So it just doesn't matter what they bring. They're always going to be there. And then you have the Padres, the Padres who... Just re-signed Machado. They have Juan Soto. And obviously, Fernando Tatis will be back. He is. I will have a roster with him in there. So he, he's in there for sure. You don't have to worry about that. But competing in this division with those two teams that probably will not go away and just trying to really almost compete half the time for maybe a, a wild card spot, it, it's really an interesting division in Colorado. And, and, you know, some young guys you saw, Zach Veen, maybe you can build around him, Gabriel Hughes, a draft pick last year. Hopefully, he could turn into something that would be fantastic because pitching is going to be huge in Colorado. Playing in Coors, it is going to be something you need to build. Those strikeout pitchers, guys that keep the ball down low, ground ball type guys, because once that ball gets in the air in Colorado, you can almost half forget about it. But Colorado is definitely a main option. Love the uniforms, love the stadium. That plays into it big time. Now, we could stay in the NL uh, West. Now the Diamondbacks, this was a team I was thinking about, oh, no doubt going to go with the, the Diamondbacks for sure. But I've kind of, you know, they're still there. They're maybe not my favorite at the moment. And that's just due to the fact that their farm system is top notch. They pretty much have a top three farm system in baseball. They have outstanding prospects. And yes, it is still in this NL West, which is the vision is absolutely brutal. But you already kind of have a, a core there and guys that are going to be ready within a year. So, you know, building this team isn't going to take, I don't think it's going to take a lot of effort. It's going to be key free agents here, there, and then just continue to progress with these guys like Drew Jones, Corbin Carroll, uh, Jordan Lawler. I mean, those guys are going to be. They're, I mean, you're hoping they're going to be absolute monsters for your team and then just continuously build up that pitching staff. But Arizona could be a team on the rise, which makes even the Colorado option even more interesting because you have a team like this within a couple years could be absolutely outstanding and make this division even harder. So really, I, I've, I've been looking at the NL West because just because of the, 
toughness of the division. But these are the two teams in the division I'm thinking of. San Francisco was possibly in there because they're kind of like, eh, they're kind of in between. But I decided these two teams, a little bit more, a little bit more ability need to be done. And let's go over to the final NL team that I'm thinking of, and that is the Chicago Cubs. Team that finished 74 and 88 last year, playing in that NL Central. And really, the Cubs, same thing. They signed Dans Dansby Swans in the offseason. They have some talent, some decent guys, middle of the road kind of farm system, but it's the Cubs. You know, they have the history behind it, uh, the uniforms, and obviously playing in Wrigley. It's absolutely fun. I mean, you cannot deny that. That plays into it big time. And they have some guys to go after. Pete Crow Armstrong, a possibility. Brennan Davis. I mean, their outfielders are there. So you might already have your outfield ready for the next, you know, five years right there. And then you kind of have to just continuously build up your pitching staff and go from there. And it's always the rivalry as well with the, you know, St. Louis Cardinals. You cannot deny that. That is absolutely fantastic to play those type of games. And it's just one of those teams that it's kind of fun to try to build around. And obviously now that they've won a World Series, you know, it's not that thing you have, you know, 100 plus years of not getting one, but... Definitely the Cubs are an option, and I think they're right up there. They're right up there for me, that, you know, playing with. You have a guy you can, you know, go with with Swanson, but still trying to build the team around and building a winner back in Chicago and getting back to the World Series. That is an option for sure. So we have two teams that I'm thinking about in the AL. Now we're going to skip the AL West. I've done a couple of franchises already, and let's go to the Central. Let's start with the Kansas City Royals. The Royals last year, 65-97. and 97. They did win the World Series in 2015. They had that absolutely dominating bullpen. Just came in and just shut everybody down. Beat the Mets. And this is an interesting team because their farm system is not the greatest. They have a lot of age, aging veterans. You know, you got Granke on his pretty much last leg. I would even say around us Chapman, Chapman as well. But you got a guy like Bobby Witt Jr. who you can kind of build the team around and hope he is your main star going forward through the future. But in reality, they do need a lot of help. This farm system needs built up some talent, but unless they kind of take off, you know, who knows? But this is, I would say, also maybe not the hardest division in baseball. I mean, the Guardians and Twins. Definitely the top front runners of this division with the White Sox right there. The White Sox are definitely right there. So if we can build this team up, and this one's going to take a few more years. That's the thing about the Royals. I think maybe a couple other teams within a year or two with some free agency guys, you know, draft, bringing some guys up. It could work out with the Royals. This could be a three year thing before we're even sniffing the playoffs. That's what this team, it really needs a lot of help. And this is, I would say, a major rebuild for sure in Kansas City. And uh, trying to be, get them back to the World Series. Because after that World Series victory, it's kind of been on a downhill fall after that. So we'll try to do that with Kansas City. So this is a full re rebuild for sure. But it could be a lot of fun. But we're going to stick in the division with the final team that I'm thinking of. And that is the Detroit Tigers. So the Royals 65 wins last year, Tigers with 66, so not much better. Now their last World Series victory was in 1984, so it has been a long, long time. They've had some, obviously, playoff success. Justin Verlander days, Miggy Cabrera. So they've had some success, but just never were able to clinch that World Series trophy uh, with this Detroit Tigers team. But this is kind of the same thing, kind of a mid-level farm system. Still needs a lot more talent. And maybe guys that are you're hoping for can step up, like Jackson Job. So you are you have guys here with some talent, but you're just hoping they take that next level, next step, and really turn into you know, a prime player like Job or Wilmer Flores, where they can be maybe a 1-2, like an ace or a number 2 pitcher. That's what you're hoping for with all these guys. But will they get there? I don't know. And really, the depth of the farm system is just not there. Mickey Cabrera, probably his last season, so you can kind of finish that one out and see what you can finish up with him and his career stats, which is an absolutely unbelievable Hall of Fame career. 
And but the Tigers are kind of the same. This is almost, I would say, a full rebuild. And you can do whatever you want with this team, just like the Royals. Just do whatever you want and bring in whoever you want. Probably trade guys. I would probably keep Mickey Cabrera, you know, to finish off his career. But everybody else up for grabs. But really, who are you going to trade around here? That's the hardest thing, too. Some franchises, you have guys you can trade. You can bring in bigger prospects. But with Kansas City and Detroit, I don't know who you're really getting rid of that's going to bring back a heck of a package that you can continue to build up prospects. So I'm not really sure about that. These two would be interesting. They would definitely be three, two to three plus year rebuilds, and it would be definitely very fun. And utilizing the new draft, utilizing the new scouting to really bring talent to these two organizations and try to get them back to a World Series, the ultimate goal of winning the World Series. So those are the five teams that I am thinking of right now. Like I said, poll will be in the description below. Also, if you don't want to vote or you want to vote and put your comment below, no problem. I'll try to count them up all as much as I can. You know, really help out to where who I'm picking. Because there's a few teams on this list. Like, there's, there's some teams higher and lower, but still... Uh, the votes will definitely help me decide who I'm thinking about going for. And I cannot wait to get this franchise going. Like I said, first episode should drop Thursday at opening day. And I cannot get waiting to go. And also, speaking of dropping tomorrow in the Lions franchise, NFC Championship should drop tomorrow. So look out for that as well. But that is going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to get this franchise going. And thank you guys so much for all the support. Keep hitting that like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.